Fora TV. Idea Immersion. Visit us at www.fora.tv. The reason I got interested in the differences in the male and female brain and the hormonal system is that um, there's a two to one ratio of women with depression over males. And guess what? In childhood, it's one to one. The age at which it starts to split and go to the two to one is da -da -da, between 12 and 14 years old for girls. The rate starts to rise. And the boys with their testosterone spurts coming out, theirs starts to go down a little bit. So by the time you end up at 15 or 16 years old, the boys have half as much depression as girls typically have. And we still, to this day, we've known that, we've known that fact since I was in medical school in, in the late 70s and early 80s. So it's a fact that's been known for a very long time, and the real reason has not entirely been figured out. However, the issue of the hormone changes at puberty that changes that. Uh, seems to, something about the fuel that runs those circuits and the increased sensitivity of the female brain to emotional nuance and um, may have something to do with that, but we still have lots and lots of ways to go with the research. Do you know, for example, if you look at the prescriptions in this country written for Prozac, Zoloft, Effexor, all of the Celexa, Lexapro, all of those um, antidepressants, uh, it runs about 75 to 80 percent of them are written for women. Mm. The drug companies themselves, the drug reps don't even know that really. I mean, it's funny that they don't know that. But it's like obvious. If it's a two to one ratio, that's what it's going to be, right? It's gonna, they're going to be, you know, 25 percent men are taking, 75 percent women are taking them. It's a, it's going to be um, definitely more female. So at any rate, um, you can argue about that being something in the society and something about that about the sociology of medicine and that women are more willing to admit they have a problem and men go to the bars and drink or that men act out. Um, however, um, I don't think that explains all of it. It explains a part of it in terms of behavior and how you behave when you're not feeling well. Um, and uh, females may get in bed and pull the covers over their head and guys may go out and, you know, drive fast or something, but that's, it doesn't, it, that, that's sort of a culture, a thought about what happens in terms of behavior, but in terms of the actual neurochemistry of the brain, it's clear the neurochemistry of the female brain lends itself to getting depressed more easily than male. And guess what happens after menopause? It's very three, cool. Three to one? It, three to one. She goes three to one. <laughs> Depends on who you're married to. No. <laughs> At any rate, I don't know, we won't go there. Anyway, the divorce rate for people filing for divorce over the age of 50, you know, it's, it's about half and half before the age of 50, but after menopause, is it more men or women? What do you think? Who, who would say it's more men? Who is it more men? They want a younger chick, right? So they, no? no. More women. 65% of the divorces over, men, at men, over menopause are, over, are filed by uh, women. That's what the government statistics show, yeah. So, um, yes, so the, the de actually the depression in women and men starts to get closer to each other after menopause. It goes back, not perfectly one-to-one, -one, it's something like about one to 1.2, one to 1.3, but it definitely goes closer to one-to-one. -one. So something about the hormones, and or, or it's about babies, or about, I mean, it's on and on and on. There's all kinds of, nobody has like really got it nailed yet about what it's about or why that happens. But we know the people who get the, the biggest rate of depression of women over men is women in their 30s with children. <laughs> so at the age when you're most needing the best female brains possible to raise the next generation, you know, it's really, it's really difficult. And of course, there are lots of people like Sarah Hurdy and lots of the feminists in this country that feel that really uh, women are not getting enough support in the new type of nuclear isolated family. We used to live in clans where sisters and sisters and mothers and grandparents were all living in the same household. I mean, I lived in Boston for a lot of years. Any of you know Somerville or, you know, the, 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 remember those triple deckers where families, three families would live, um, you know, stacked up on top of each other. I mean, the mom, the parent, grandparents would be on the top floor or the bottom floor and there'd be, you know, people would help take care of each other's kids and fill in for each other. And it wasn't this like have to get a babysitter two weeks in advance or, you know, have enough money to have in-home care or nannies. I mean, it just, it just wasn't. And then, of course, who is it that gets blamed for not helping out around the house enough? 
The father of the man, yeah. I think guys are catching it in the shorts for a, syst a system that's developed in our country that's not their fault. You know, they, they should be encouraged to do better, but of course. But <laughs> at any rate, it's, I, know, I think it's, more, it's a structural problem that we've hit in our society of not really having enough adults around to help with raising the kids.